folks, Kevin here. Uh, well, I just got done doing a little bit of work with uh, Mini-Me. This is a Kubota B2601. This is actually Thea's tractor. She's over in the work area now. And uh, after one of my videos, I think it was uh, the Kubota L6060, uh, answering uh, some questions, <coughs> Off Grid Whiskey asked, Hey Kevin, great video. I'm looking at buying an L6060 hydrostatic uh, transmission. I'm curious why you went with ballast box instead of maybe uh, wheel weights or fluid in the tires or in the, in the wheels, uh, such as uh, beet juice and so on. And there are, that is absolutely an excellent question. And uh, some of it has to do with, um, with practicality, costs, multifunction ability, and ease of access, and lightness on the ground as well. So let me try and go through those. Uh, now I know I'm not using the L6060 right now, but the same concepts apply. So let's just look at the tractor. Forget the ballast box now and forget the front end loader. Just look at the small tractor itself. And when we're looking at the tractor, we really want to have the weight distributed low and wide for stability. So if you're on slopes or if you're on property that has that undulates or that you have soft spots as well, you want to reduce the chances of the tractor uh, tipping over. So a low center of gravity is is very important. And the way that the tractors are built right nowadays, they're pretty good unless they're very narrow. And in some cases, you may want to get uh, wheel spacers that you can actually uh, increase the width of the tractor as well but with regards to uh, you know whenever we're having any other attachments on the vehicle I'm always looking at well what's the strongest parts of this tractor uh, so we have two axles we have a front axle and we have a rear axle uh, the front axle this is pretty beefy in this small tractor it's actually a pretty good uh, axle but when you look at the at the rear end this axle is actually even stronger and more robust and in in the L6060 it's even more uh, powerful so where I'd want the weight uh, with Let's say when we hook on a front end loader or or a, the uh, grapple on the front end of the of the tractor, what that's going to do is it's going to move the center of gravity towards the front of the tractor. So having adequate ballast, like I've talked about in the past, is is absolutely essential. So what are your choices? You can have wheel weights, <coughs> and they come in various sizes. So you can have them fit within the rim of the of the tractor you can have fluid filled tires down south they may just use water which i wouldn't recommend because of rust and all uh, you can use a calcium filled you can use a, a soy based product you can use be, uh, beet juice uh, something that doesn't freeze up here in the north so those are all possibilities and i had fluid filled tractor tractor tires on my case 995 and whenever I had to have work done on it, I had to call the, uh, the tire repair service out and they charge from the moment they leave their shop to the time they get here because I didn't have an excavator at the time to uh, block up the tractor, pick up the wheel and put it in the back of my trailer and, and bring it down there for work to be done. So there's more of a cost if you do have an incident where the valve stem gets damaged, uh, where, the, where there's a, a leak in the tire for some reason. The wheel weights, they're pretty expensive and you need a lot of wheel weight depending on what you're, what you're picking up with the front of the tractor. The, the, uh, when we're, they're talking about weight of tractors, often they're talking about that at the level of the pin, this spot right here, when they're talking about how much uh, the load capacity is. Well, now we got grapples. We may, have, may be picking out a great big log in front of it. We may be, you have a set of forks and pick up a pallet of, of firewood or other materials or a piece of equipment off the front of a truck. Uh, some, you know, uh, some people will actually hook a trailer hitch right onto their to their bucket as well. And let's say you're you're going down a, a, a little slope, all that weight is going to be on that front axle, and the and your brakes are in your rear axle. Unless you have it in four wheel drive, then at least that'll help to slow it down. 
So having adequate weight over this rear axle is of paramount importance to me. So the reason that I say that is because this is where the brakes are and then I've got all four wheels uh, that I can use for slowing things down with the transmission as well if I'm on different slopes, on, on, on a slope or, or a decline of some sort. So the, the, the advantage of having a ballast box, number one, it's dirt cheap. And you'll notice that my ballast box I have uh, hooked up to a quick attach, uh, attachment here. Why? Well, it's easier for me to disconnect from this ballast box, set it down when I don't need it on here. It's lighter. I'm not going to do as much sinking with our wet property, so they're just air-filled tires. And if I'm not carrying anything in the front end and just carrying light stuff around, I don't need any ballast back here. And I can move around in the property and do less damage to the soaking wet spots and all. Less chance of digging in and tearing up. But with having the uh, quick attach uh, uh, set up hooked to the ballast box that puts it back even fur further so the further back that the weight is the more that that you're bringing the fulcrum more backwards uh, further further towards the rear of the tractor I really want more than 50% of the weight on the rear axles at all times so if I'm carrying something real heavy I'm just using a simple mechanical principle of a lever system. So if I, let's say that this is the, is the fulcrum of the tractor with weight on the front and weight on the back, if I have the, the wheel weights right here, that moves the, the fulcrum up to this point or even further forward if you don't have enough weight. People use the, uh, oh, I, I, I'm gonna call them suitcases different metal weights and hook them on to the to close to the back of the tractor i want to get it as far away from the rear wheels as possible so that i can use the teeter-totter the fulcrum the le the length of this arm back here require it, the longer it is the less weight i need in the back in order to offset the weight out here the ability and now i'm using a ballast box in this particular situation but there are many other people online who have, who have just can you you can use a, uh, a you know like a drum, fill it with stone, fill it with concrete. Cheaper ones than the Kubota or the Land Pride ones. Uh, Titan. There's a whole bunch of uh, companies that make them, and you can fill it with sand and have a hole here. You can have a three-point uh, hitch here, but I would caution people with using a three-point hitch there. You want to be mindful of the load that you're pulling behind you because the three-point hitch isn't designed to haul as much as your drawbar is down below. The three-point hitch on these Kubota tractors is amazing how much weight these ones can lift. I can put my big ballast box for my uh, L6060 on the back of this and lift it up no problem whatsoever. So I have the flexibility of using various different weight ballasts without having to take blocks out of this if I don't want to. I have this set up so my chainsaw can fit in here as well and other tools. Uh, but that isn't the, the main reason for this one. I just did this temporarily, and it's worked fantastic with the grapple and logs and all up in the front. And how do I test it? I bring it over soft spots or ruts. I'll put that front right wheel right over the side and see, is this going to tip? Do I have to drop that bucket down quickly? Uh, so I do test the things out. I'm very mindful whenever I'm going downhill, going forward, which is kind of dangerous. I don't want too much weight on the front because we can tilt that back end up. You lose your braking ability. And remember, if you get in that situation, drop that bucket immediately. Let me show you one other option. All right. So it's ballast box costs less than uh, the wheel weights. Uh, it's less of a hassle if you have an issue and you, and you want to lighten the tractor up, the, the load. Uh, you, it's a real hassle to take those wheel weights off. It's a, it's a hassle if you have to have the tire repaired. And certainly it's much more of a hassle if you have them fluid filled. Uh, I'm going to show you over here. 
So the I have the ultimate tool rack, which I'll do some videos on, and I I have a video when I when I had this delivered. Sorry about how dark it is in here, and and my shop is absolutely a pig pen. But this is the ultimate tool rack by Big Tool Rack, and it has all different attachments. This is hooks on to the three-point hitch on the other side, and I can load this up with whatever equipment that I want. Those uh, legs with the wheels on it can, can go up. There's pins on the side here. I'll make videos about this in the future. And it has a three-point hitch. Would I use this very often for very much stuff? No, what I would use it for and it's behind this ladder, is this unit right here. So something you might uh, haul materials if you're, if you're moving someplace and all. So this is just a small little extension. So I can actually carry lots of nursery supplies, pruning supplies, uh, forestry equipment down into the forest, set, the, set the, the tool rack down there, hook up to the, to the wood chipper, do the work off the back of the big tractor over here. And th do, does this require a lot of counter, counter weight in the back? No, this doesn't. But it gives me adequate uh, downward pressure. So I didn't put the extended uh, quick hitch attachment on this yet, which would have brought it back further here. Again, the rear end here is much more robust, much stronger axle than the front end axle. And this is a pretty robust front end axle on this piece of equipment. But uh, that's one, you know, one of the main reasons is to actually make that the arm of, the, of this lever system as long as possible to, uh, to accomplish moving the fulcrum backwards and maintaining a good center of gravity so that I can move around. Okay, once again, the ultimate tool rack. Uh, I'll make some videos about that when I get the, the opportunity. I'll try and make videos about each one of these pieces of equipment uh, as time goes on. So, they're less expensive, they're more flexible, you can take them off and make the vehicle lighter. Uh, you can change the amount of weight, you can make your own uh, ballast box out of a whole bunch of different materials at like Tractor Supply or Amazon or Titan. You can get a three-point hitch thing that just comes out and it looks like a, a, uh, a horseshoe sticking out off the back of it. You can put some deck boards on it. You can design your own uh, system for carrying various uh, supplies working on different parts of your property. There are many YouTubers who've, uh, who've com sh who have shared their, uh, their own ballast systems and all. Do I want to use the big, the ultimate tool rack out here in the middle of the winter when the snow and all that stuff is building up in it? No, these uh, ballast boxes work better. Are these the best ballast boxes out there, the Land Pride ones? No, I don't think not necessarily. Uh, do I think it'd be nice to have a three-point hitch on the back of this? Yeah, it potentially could be. Uh, if you want to weld hooks on there. If you want to, a lot of people put PVC down in here and put sand in there as well. Or they weld uh, some steel tubes on the outside so you can put your shovel and your, uh, I'm sorry, put your shovel and, and rake and uh, or weed whacker on the back of this as well. So they're they can provide multi-functions, the ballast box here, but being able to drop them off quick and easy seems to be a great uh, advantage. Having it as far away from the rear axle as possible seems to be a great advantage. Having it, if you have a problem with a, with a wheel or a tire, I can take this off and put it in the back of the pickup truck and it won't be a big issue. So those are the reasons why, why I decided to go with the, uh, with the ballast box. So I hope this helps out. If it does, please give us a thumbs up. If you have any comments or questions or pictures you wanna share, uh, with your balancing system, I'm really super excited to see that as well. Thanks so much for watching. Have a great day. Bye-bye now.